to today's edition of Pegasus Test. On today's edition, we're going to go over the civilian use of a listening post slash observation post. Now first, I'd like to ask you to go over to Brent 0331's channel. He recently did a video on military listening post observation posts, and it gives you a really good rundown of what happens. What we're going to do today with Scott's help here from Cycle Outdoors is go over the civilian application of a listening post observation post and how it's different and why you would use it. Scott? Hey guys, so what we have here today is a local business owner and in his business park there's been a, a rash of catalytic converter thefts overnight. So what we're going to do is actually set up an LPOP in this local business park and see what we see. Primarily differences being instead of armed with uh, M4s, we're going to have phones we can call non-emergency numbers to report any thefts that we observe. Right, so one of the things that's different from uh, the military is in the military, you'd be having field phones, radios, whatever for that LPOP that's going to be a, a, at max about 100 meters out from your main position. Well, here in the civilian OP, LPOP, your cell phone here is your big communication device. Uh, you're probably most likely going to be a very small uh, group of people, like in this case it's Scott and I, and the only people we can call is the police. Now the important thing is here, we're not attempting to engage anybody if we see them. We may turn the light, headlights on, we may honk the horn, we might create a distraction to scare them off, but we are not going to engage with them because if we do this right, they won't know we're there and our lives will not be threatened. And the other really handy thing with the phone is not only can we call, but it's got this handy little camera on the back so we can record any evidence that, that may come up in our in the course of our night. All right, so we're going to get back to you here shortly as we go set up our LPOP. Okay, so what we've got here, Scott is observing our objective area of where the vehicles are parked. He's using a psionics camera. Now, the reason we brought a psionics camera is it's digital night vision. With the limited light we have out here, it enhances it and makes it look like you are looking through camera at high noon. So this is a good observation device. Also, it's a video recorder, so we can record anything we see. Another great feature of the um, Psyonix is it has a time-lapse feature. So we're going to mount this thing on the dash, put it in time-lapse mode, and it's going to be observing the area. That way we don't have to uh, get fatigued having this thing up to our eye the whole time. All right. When you're out here on an LPOP, you're going to be out here a while. So one of the things you want to bring with you is hydration. We've got a bunch of bottled waters here. And when you pick your spot, one of the things you have to factor in is when you've drank all this water, what are you going to do when it's time to take a leak? Now here, we've uh, made the thing is we've got some spare bottles in the back. And we're not going to show you that part for obvious reasons. So we don't have to leave the vehicle at all. We've got snacks with us if we need them. We have our observation devices. One of them is this Psyonix camera right here. Uh, what we're using this is as a night observation device. It's n digital night vision. It's fairly inexpensive. There is light out here from various floodlights around where an actual camera wouldn't pick up that good, but this will seem like we're shooting in the middle of the day. We've put it in time-lapse mode so we can just set it up here on the dash and we're not fatigued by holding the camera to our eye and uh, scanning back and forth. And we've got it aimed out towards the vehicles uh, and that should catch any movement while we're observing with our eyes. All right, now we're gonna be out here all night. So one of the things you have to plan on, just like if you were out in the woods on a military operation, is a sleep rotation. You know, you've worked all day, you can't stay up all night. Nobody's that awesome. And this is kind of freaking boring, to be honest. Just sitting here watching some trucks with nothing happening. So Scott and I have worked out a sleep rotation. I'm gonna observe for two hours and then he's gonna rest and then he'll relieve me. We're in the vehicle here. We can get fairly comfortable. We're temperature controlled, so we're not gonna freeze. We've got some warm clothing so we don't have to run the vehicle for heat or anything like that. Temperatures tonight are not oppressively cold. So we're prepared for that. Also, the way we're dressed, if I was out in the military operation right now, I would be camouflaged up. I'd have a camouflage uniform. My face would be painted up. My hands would be covered with gloves. But, you know, here out in the civilian world, that would be the worst thing to be wearing right now. What do you wear on, on an, a civilian LPOP? What everybody else is wearing. So we've got fairly nondescript clothes on, dark colors that'll blend in. 
I'm wearing a dark gray jacket and some deep, deep dark OD uh, pants. Scott's wearing something roughly the same. So if we get out of the vehicles, get out of the light, we blend into the shadows very quickly. We're not flamboyant. We're not wearing fluorescent orange or highlighter yellow or anything like that. We're just wearing subdued, natural colored clothing. All right, guys, so we're in our position. We have a nice field of view. We're off to the side, out of the way in a vehicle that is right at home in, in this part of town. Um, now, in addition to the spot being inconspicuous, there's also our own dress and the equipment that we, we brought with us. So uh, we have very neutral colors on, things like you know, grays and gray and uh, greens and browns and just really nothing terribly eye-catching, which is obviously deliberate. Um, same thing for the backpacks. Uh, there's no molly on it, no, no Punisher skulls, nothing like that pretty low-key stuff, nothing remarkable about it. And that's exactly the point. So while we do have basically our hide site of the vehicle that we're in, and uh, ideally we are not going to be leaving, and we have plans for that. We have water, we have a rest rotation, we have some food, we have uh, shelter and warm clothing, sleeping bags, stuff like that. But if we did have to leave for whatever reason, again, we're not gonna be terribly conspicuous about it. So in my bag here, uh, I've got some more water. I've got a medical kit with your normal boo-boo kind of stuff. Also have uh, an IFAC component to it. We brought some observation devices. I've got a pair of binoculars in here. Uh, Les brought a Psyonix digital night vision device, which is pretty darn cool. And these are ideal conditions for it where there is some light. It performs at a phenomenal level and in color uh, and you get much more distinction out of it than you would with traditional night vision with greener or white phosphor. So in this particular niche, it can actually outperform much more expensive models. It's it's really cool, as well as recording, which we alluded to a little bit earlier. So we're just getting set in here. We're all ready for the night. We've got a sleep rotation between the two of us so we can keep an eye on the place until morning. All right, so here we are in the rest cycle. And Scott is under his poncho liner. He's getting some good Z's. Now, I'm going to wake him up because it's 0300. It's his time to take over. But one of the things I'm going to do after I wake him up is brief him on anything I may have observed. Obviously, I haven't seen anything where I've had to wake him up quickly. But I have seen a few things go by. So, here we go. Scott, yo. Wake up, Scott. All right, 0300. The only thing I've seen is a couple of vehicles go by, some dark SUVs, kind of like the one we're in, but they didn't really slow down. They just drove by and actually seen some wildlife come through the parking lot. Just a few deer around here, believe it or not. But other than that, haven't seen anybody missing with the trucks or anything like that. No news is good news. Yep. Cool. All, All right. right, I'm going to rack out. We're out here because there is known criminal activity. It has occurred here and it has occurred more than once. And that's our whole purpose of being out here is to observe, see if we observe any of that. So well, what happens if we actually do? Well, the primary plan here is uh, Les is in the driver's seat. He's gonna be able to turn the vehicle on, flash the lights, we can honk the horn if we need to. And my immediate actions over here, obviously I'm not driving anything, so I'm gonna hop on the phone and make those phone calls to the appropriate authorities uh, in this area. So hopefully that will deter any potential crime that may be going on. We'll get uh, authorities alerted to that. We have evidence collected on it. And then of course, as, a, as Les already alluded to earlier, we are not looking to engage anything. This is an observe and report kind of thing. That's what an LPOP does. It doesn't go looking for fights. Uh, but if that person did or group did turn aggressive, uh, our primary avenue of escape is we've got a 5,000 pound guided missile that we can ride to get on out of here. Um, so, and then of course, as a, as a last resort, we do have the means to protect ourselves here. All right. Now, if we were in a military situation, what will we be doing? 
we'd have a covered and concealed position, hopefully a position that provided cover from incoming fire if we're discovered, and we'd have an avenue of escape. We don't do exactly the same thing here, but it, in a way we do. Because right now, we're in the vehicle, the vehicle's all blacked out. Light discipline is incredibly important right now because you're gonna notice a vehicle that's got lights on. Uh, just as in the field, light di discipline would be incredibly important. Uh, lack of unnecessary movement. You know, We're not gonna make any unnecessary movement here just like we wouldn't in a military context. We have an avenue of escape here. As Scott mentioned, if we need to get out of here, I'm turning the vehicle on, mashing the gas, and driving. And I can, from my point of view here, I can see one point of escape that way, another point that way, a third if I can make a U-turn and get out of here. So we have our planned avenues of escape. Also, we have a good field of view. We're covering everywhere we want to cover. We're not standing out. The vehicle we're in is parked in amongst some other vehicles, and it looks like a vehicle that should be here. That's one of the considerations you have to have when you're gonna be in the area. In addition to dressing uh, in an unobtrusive manner, don't bring out your flashy Corvette that's got flames down the side. You know, don't bring a loud motorcycle. Uh, we're in a big SUV that's of a neutral color. It blends in with the other vehicles around here. It looks like a vehicle that should be here. You know, if I was here in a travel trailer or a motorhome, that would stick out and draw people's attention. So as much as your clothing is an important choice, so is your vehicle. No flower vans? No, it's not recommended. All right, so probably the obvious question you're thinking here is, it's in a business park, it has a security problem, aren't there cameras? And the answer to that question is yes, there are. All the buildings here have cameras. The problem with the cameras is they're going to a recording device somewhere in the building or some offsite uh, place and there's probably nobody actually staring at the screens. They're just recording. So it'll be great to have that information if the cameras actually catch anything. But the problem is you're not gonna know the catalytic converters have been stolen till the truck drivers come in on the next work day and try to get their vehicles to move and find out they can't. So um, the purpose of the stakeout here is to be an active deterrent. Now we said we would not be engaging and that's true, we won't, but by honking the horn, turning on the lights, or just being around here, the average uh, crook that's stealing uh, catalytic converters or other truck parts is not going to hang around and fight it out. He's going to scurry away like rats in the light, and that's what we're hoping to achieve should we see anybody doing anything they're not supposed to be doing. All right. Well, it's dawn, and our uh, LPOP civilian style is over. What happened? Absolutely nothing, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. Nothing got stolen, that's a bonus. We had no encounters with nefarious criminal elements, that's a bonus. Didn't have to have any altercations, another bonus. The biggest of bonuses. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a very successful night. To recap, why would you want to do this? Well, you don't want to do it, but it's necessary. And it's community policing. Our regular police forces now are understaffed and overcommitted to everything. And Property crimes are getting pretty low on their list just with the rise of violent crimes out there in the world. So this helps them out. We go out, we observe our property, we get them data where they can use to track down and uh, find these people. Should you do this? That's a personal decision, but you have to realize that uh, in the modern day, if you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will.